It's pretty easy to tell if a nearly solved cube is possible to fully solve, but it's actually possible to tell if a scrambled cube is possible to be fully solved as well. Let's start off with the easiest puzzle, square one. It's just always solvable. Next up is clock, which is solvable as long as the color scheme is right. So in, on this puzzle, it's black has to be facing the white side and white has to be facing the black side. Or here, it's light blue facing light blue and dark blue facing dark blue. For the rest of this video, we'll be assuming that the color scheme is always correct, but if you want to memorize the Mega Megamix color scheme, be my guest. Next up, we have our first unsolvable state, which is a corner twist on a 2x2. Two two. So a corner twist is basically when the sum of the corners does, is not divisible by three. So here is a corner twist. And if we flip, twist another corner, then it will be a corner twist. But if we twist a third corner, this is actually solvable. So how we count this is we have uh, this as negative one, this as positive one, and this is zero. Uh, so if we have this, negative one plus positive one is zero. And these zeros all count, they don't count for anything. Looking at a scramble two by two, we can look at the white and yellow pieces. So here, these could all be zero, and, but this would be a positive one. And then this would be positive one, negative one, positive one, positive one. So that sums to three total which means that this is solvable. But if we had this for instance, then this would be positive one, positive one, negative one. So summing to positive one on the top and positive one here, that's positive two total, which means that it's unsolvable. On three by three, we still have the corner twist, which works the exact same on, on two by two we now have two extra ways that we can have an unsolvable state. The first is an edge flip, which basically means that an odd amount of edges are flipped, in this case, one. So if we go to uh, an unsolved state, we can look at the colors white and yellow, and secondarily, green and blue. So if a primary color, so white uh, or yellow, is facing either a secondary center or a primary center, we can tell that it's oriented. But if it's on both, then we can look at if the primary color is facing the primary center. And if an edge has both of them, we just look at the primary, but if it only has one, we look at the secondary. Here we can look at one, two, it are both oriented. This is oriented as well. This is unoriented, so we have one unoriented so far. Here we have a second unoriented, a third unoriented, a fourth unoriented, and a fifth unoriented. That means that since we have five unoriented edges and that's an odd amount, that means that this is unsolvable. Last unsolvable state for 3x3 three three is parity, where you require an odd amount of switches to solve the cube. We have one switch here, which is an odd amount, so that means that it's unsolvable. But if you had like this, for, for instance, you would also, it would still be unsolvable since it's one switch, and then this blue would have to go here, too. And then this orange would have to go here, three. So that's three switches, which is still unsolvable. You should also be sure to count the corner switches as well. So for instance, here, this corner needs to switch with this. So that's one switch, and that's only a corner switch, but then these two need to switch, and then these two need to switch. So that's three switches total, because two edge switches and one corner switch, which means that this is, has parity. For a fully scrambled cube, you'll basically do the exact same thing, just it's doing it with cycles. So this goes here, and this piece goes over here, which goes over here, 
which goes over here, and you just count how many pieces are in a cycle and count how many cycles there are. And I'm not going to do this in full depth because it's time consuming, but if you're interested in learning how to do it, look up blindfold tracing. One side note is that you can actually do all the orientation checks and the parity check in one step by looking at specific stickers instead of the pieces. So this yellow sticker goes over here, this yellow sticker goes over here, this orange sticker goes over here, this white sticker goes over here, and repeat that with both the edges and corners, and if you have an odd amount of either of them, then that means that you have parity. Moving on to 4x4, we actually don't have any new impossible states. The only actual impossible state on 4x4 is a corner twist. It's impossible to solve a single wing he flip, but that's impossible by a hardware standard as well, so we're not going to talk about that. This is the same for 6x6 and any even layered n by n puzzle. For 5x5 and any odd layered n by n puzzles, we look at the middle uh, wingies as if they're the edges and the corners as if they're the corners, and the centers as if they're the centers, and we just do the three by three checks. Next up, we've got Megaminx, which you can just do the three by three blindfolded tracing method where you look at the stickers only, and this is super time consuming, so I'm not gonna go into it. Next up, we've got Pyraminx. Pyraminx is actually uh, kind of weird, but so the center pieces can be rotated whatever way, and it won't change anything since they don't matter. And so can the tips. So all that really matters is the edges. If we scramble up our pyraminx like this, I'm not going to scramble the centers and the tips because they don't actually matter. But so then we can just check for the edges using the sticker tracing method. So this edge goes over here, that's one twitch. And that goes over here, which is another switch, so two. And then that, this one goes over here, three. This one goes over here, four. And that's it. So four switches, which is even, which means that we don't have parity. Next up is cube, which we'll say has two sets of tetrads. Uh, those are basically just groups of four, so uh, of corners. So one is these four corners, and one is these four corners. We can look at this more visually here, where these four are corners, and these are the center caps. So both of these will always be solved relative to each other. So we can have this, and if we move this, it's the same as if we had to move this. And vice versa with these. A scrambled cube will always have the tetrads permuted relative to each other. So we can see that this tetrad is permuted relative to itself. And then this tetrad is at a different orientation, but these two are solved relative to, or permuted relative to these two. The next restriction is on the center of parity. So that basically means that the centers have to have an even amount of switches. We'll look at the center as the thing that we'll test everything relative to. So this is solved, and this is solved, and so is this one actually, since blue is opposite green. So blue has to go next to blue, so that's one switch, and then the yellow has to go opposite white, which is the second switch, and then that red will be solved. So it's an opposite orange, so since that's two switches, that means that the parity is even, which means it's solvable. Next up, we've got corner orientation, which is actually a bit different from 2x2. Two two. So unlike 2x2, two two, where we do it all relative to the same thing, so here it would be positive 1, this would be negative 1, and this is also negative 1, so that's a total of negative 1, which means this is unsolvable. But this is actually solvable. What we need to do is do it relative to each tetrad, so these two and these two, we have a total of this one's uh, has a negative one, and then we have a second tetrad here and here. So this is negative one, 
this is positive one, so those cancel each other out. And then this is negative one and this is zero. So the positive one from earlier and the negative one here cancel each other out, so it sums to zero. This last requirement is by far the weirdest. Basically it says that the sum of one tetrad, so let's look at this one. So if this is zero, this is zero, and then these two, so this is zero, and this is negative one. So negative one, and the position of one of the corners of the other tetrad will indicate the position of the rest, other three corners of the other tetrad. But here's a table basically showing you all of the values that I found for this. Since this corner is in the UFR, we can determine from the table that this corner should be in the DBR, which is correct. Make sure to like and subscribe for more step theory.